This is a list of my 10 favorite video game songs. I'm starting with a quick one, so I'll play it twice. Shin's theme, as far as I know, is a song made exclusively for the NES version of Double Dragon. Man, I love that bass line. I remember playing this game as a kid and being scared of a bobo. He was huge and hit you hard. And the part where two of them bust out of the side of a mountain? Get ready for a beat down. Speaking of beatdowns, it's the game you love to hate. Battletoads was so hard, but it always made you play it again because it was so good. Up until the point where you had to ride on those speeder bikes, that is. I'll be honest, I never beat that level. The only way I even saw the other levels was because of the game genie, and the rest of the levels were just as crazy. Like the one where you had to race the rat to the ball. Ridiculous but awesome. Mega Man 4 is where things really started to change in the series. The Mega Buster could be charged, and Dr. Cossack was sorta, kinda, the villain this time. But this game holds a special place in my heart, if nothing else than for this song. The Mega Man series is filled with great songs, and some of you are wondering why I went with this one. Mega Man 3 was the first Mega Man game I played, and as happy as I was that I could go back and play the first two games as well, Mega Man 4 was the first one I could get excited about, anticipating its release. The opening scenes were stunning, and memories of playing the game return whenever I hear this song. I'm a longtime Kirby fan. I remember getting Kirby's Dream Land on Game Boy when I was younger, and one thing that made it an amazing experience was the music throughout the entire game. The rest of the songs are pretty happy and bubbly though, but when you face King DDD, you know you're in for a fight. When Kirby Superstar was released for the Super Nintendo, Kirby fans everywhere were given the game of their dreams, and it's still my favorite entry in the franchise. The graphics were bright and colorful, the controls were perfect, the power-ups were improved, and the iconic music was given a beautiful 16-bit treat. With a total of 9 games on the cartridge, and yes, some of them are the equivalent of mini-games, there was always something else to do. Find treasure, race King DDD, or try to break the world in half. Mega Man X is, without a doubt, my favorite Mega Man game. When this one was released, it showed an incredible transition from the previous games on the NES. Mega Man was bigger and better than ever, and so was the music. It was grander, heavier, and much more fleshed out than the music from Mega Man 1 through 4, but it still retained and improved on Capcom's melodic sensibilities. This is the one entry on the list that makes me feel like some sort of elitist hipster jerk or something. Either you got Unirasers, or you didn't. And I did. For me, this was like the Tony Hawk of the Super Nintendo era. As much fun as the racing tracks were, the tracks where you had to do tricks to score the most points were the most fun. For each of the nine circuits, they'd add something new to the courses. Just when you thought you had the game figured out, they'd throw something new in to keep you on your toes. Especially when you got to the final circuit, Hunter. Beating those tracks requires a lot of skill and a little bit of luck. The whole game had this thrashy, punky, surf rock vibe to it that kept you pumped the whole time. Add in the psychedelic tracks and backgrounds, a stellar amount of gnarly 90s slang, and you have a quirky, unique racing game that really deserves a sequel. Or at the very least, a re-release on the Virtual Console.
Ah, Street Fighter 2, the game that launched a thousand fighting games into the market. While a lot of people moved on to find their favorites like Mortal Kombat or Tekken, Street Fighter was always my pick. Notable exceptions include Street Fighter the Movie the Game, which was a poor Mortal Kombat clone, and the Street Fighter EX series, which was a poor Tekken clone. Keep things 2D and you'll keep me happy. Assuming that you include the great music, of course. It's one thing that Capcom was notable for. It didn't matter what the game was, you could expect a feast for the ears. All of the songs in Street Fighter 2 are amazing, and every stage theme is appropriate to its respective character without sounding stereotypical. It was tough to rule out both Chun-Li and Vega's themes, but Ken's theme is a little more aggressive sounding and always gave me an extra adrenaline rush. From a gaming point of view, this is probably an odd choice. But both Top Gear and its sequel were solid racing games for the Super Nintendo. For the most part, I don't really enjoy racing games that don't involve being able to throw turtle shells or making unicycles do tricks, but Top Gear was a special case and is really a lot of fun. If you passed or ran into another car, your car would get a little speech bubble over it saying things like, EAT MY DUST! or the symbols that comic book characters use in place of actual profanity. You know, like exclamation point pound star question mark. Makes me think that Qbert is driving the car or something. Having the nitro boosts also help Top Gear feel a little more like arcade-style fun than a racing simulation bore fest. I'm talking to you, Nigel Mansell's World Championship Racing. Now, from a musical point of view, this is an obvious choice. Compared to the previous songs on this list, this is the most developed. As simple as most of these songs are structurally, they generally follow an intro-verse-chorus structure. This song has build-ups, breakdowns, verses, choruses, and extended bridge, and it's all composed so well that at times it can be tough to clearly identify where one part ends and the next begins. Being a racing game, it's important that the music be as exciting and adrenaline-filled as the racing itself, and Top Gear delivers. Even in this extended breakdown section, it's still fast-paced, thanks to that frantic bass line. The song slowly piles the synths back on and builds its way back up to repeat the verse melody so that racing fans around the world can once again rejoice to this melodic masterpiece. One more thing. If you're going to play this game, pick the white car. The rest of the cars may seem like they're better, but you'll more than likely run out of gas before you can cross the finish line in the later stages. And it sure is irritating when you can see the finish line, but your car is slowing down because it's out of fuel, other cars start passing you, and you come to a dead stop a few feet before you can finish the race. Trust me, just go with the white car. Being an X-Men fan and a gamer led to a fair amount of disappointment until the release of X-Men Mutant Apocalypse. The characters were huge, you could perform Street Fighter-style special attacks, the action was intense, and the music was some of the finest that Capcom has ever produced. This was the first X-Men game since the arcade beat-em-up that really made me feel like it was more than just a game. It was an experience. Unlike the arcade game, however, this was a single-player only game. But that's not really a bad thing, though. Having a two-player mode didn't make the NES X-Men game any better, did it? With the other nine songs on this list being upbeat, aggressive rock songs, you may be a little surprised to hear this song topping the list. But a big part of this song is the memories that go with it. 
I was 11 when A Link to the Past came out, and at that time it was the biggest and most epic adventure I'd ever been on. The bosses were gigantic and required a lot of puzzle solving just to reach. The dungeons were all different, and picking up the many items in your inventory that were spread across Hyrule let you choose from a few different options when you had to pass certain enemies or obstacles. The townspeople were interesting characters, and it really made me feel good to help them with their problems, like when I had to bomb a hole in the wall to get the feuding brothers to talk to each other again. I really invested myself in the game, to the point where I was Link, and saving Zelda was my own personal priority. From the sense of accomplishment I felt when I got the three pendants and claimed the Master Sword from the Lost Woods, to the sense of loss and hopelessness when Aghanim banished me to the Dark World, I never gave up hope. Ever vigilant on my mission, I saved the Seven Maidens from their crystal prisons in the hopes that they could lead me to Princess Zelda. When they broke the mystical seal that prevented me from entering Ganon's tower, I knew that this was it. I was in for the fight of my life. But Aghanim fell once more, and the spirit of Ganon rose from his body and flew off. The final battle had been delayed, but that just gave me a minute to calm down. After Ganon's eventual defeat, I had a conversation with the Triforce. It told me to think of a wish and hold on to it in my heart. The power of the Triforce had restored the Golden Land to its former beauty, and everyone's problems went away, like the terminally ill bug-catching kid. I should probably return his net. I've only had it for, oh, 20 years now. But this song sums up the feelings of triumph I got from partaking in this adventure. It was my fanfare for a job well done, like the medal ceremony at the end of Star Wars. I was a hero, and this song really made me feel like it, to the point where I was sad when Link went back to the woods and put the Master Sword back into the stone tablet where it could sleep forever. The ending left me wondering if this would be the last Legend of Zelda game, or if it would get a sequel. And yes, there have been more Zelda games since, and Link's Awakening for the Game Boy and the Minish Cap for Game Boy Advance come the closest to the feeling of a true sequel, but none of them truly captured the A Link to the Past feel. There was a pseudo-sequel on the Satellaview in Japan, but I don't want a pseudo-sequel that I never got anyway. Wouldn't a true sequel to A Link to the Past have been awesome? I think so. That's the wish that I held on to in my heart. If you enjoyed this list, please let me know if you'd like to see another. I could have easily made this a top 25 list, and some songs only beat out others by a small margin. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time. Although... I'm the one with the camera, so I guess you'll see me next time. Bye!